Yes! But brilliant! Deal with it. What's got around the back? And Richie Wood is down again! The magic man has come up with another trick! Well, there's a chance to seal it! It's done! It's Georgie Kelly! Hello everybody, welcome back to WO Talk. This is the Rotherham United podcast and we have an episode where the deadline is shut. The deadline's finished. Uh, we're not going to you know, fill some time till, till uh, we confirm our final signing. It's done uh, and now we have a game to look forward to. First time in two weeks we have a game, Sheffield United at home, a South Yorkshire derby, which I think we're all quite looking forward to now. Um, <laughs> uh, we have Michael with us first. How are you doing, Mick? I'm all right, mate. I feel like I've been on this podcast for about last... 50 odd hours. <laughs> I just feel like I've never been away from here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Danny, how are you doing, mate? I'm going good. Um, I am completely yours for tonight, lads, because my phone died and he's now upstairs charging. So I am completely yours with no distractions tonight. Like it. Is that a new shirt? I know that your shirt's not new. I haven't seen you in that retro shirt before. Well, wow. there's, a sto- there's a story behind that, Matt, because before this shirt didn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> I have somehow lost enough weight to squeeze into a medium. Um, Very good. And, ah, yeah. What you've done is change the label. No, it's not. I, I can't even see what top label. It's that old. It's faded. But on the website I bought it from, it said it was a medium. Um, bought it a bit ago, like. But I think it's uh, either 88, 89 or 89, 90. One of them two. But yeah, it fits. I mean, mum said to me it's an old medium as well, and they were even skinnier back then. It's like <laughs> that sounds <laughs> real. And Kev Johnson back with you. How are you, Kev? Yeah, good mate. Very good, thank you. Good to have with you. Shall we start by mentioning the uh, your shirts that you're auctioning off? Uh, first of all, to remind everybody these the shirts and the uh, raffles for the FA Cup third round shirts uh, that are. Reasonably. Yeah, can do, mate. Yeah, the, it um, obviously ends um, tomorrow, twelve o'clock noon. Brilliant so far. So I can't believe. Obviously, it's January and everyone's well, February now, but everyone's had a really long payday till January, and everyone's chipped in again. We haven't done the count yet. Obviously, it finishes tomorrow at twelve, but the mm. bids on the shirt. So I think the our last shirt's about three forty, three forty-five. The Lindsay on, Lindsay and Ogbeni ones are both over two hundred. So that's good as well. And the auction, the raffle one. Um, obviously, these are the shirts. The raffle mm. one, we'd, we'll do the count at 12. But I think that's well over a grand as well. So it should be another couple of wow. thousand to possibly. So, yeah, thank you, everybody who's had a go. It's been brilliant. brilliant. Amazing stuff. Fantastic. Mm. Mm. Love it. Um, so let's go who's with us. We've got Paul Brock with us, Josh Hinsley. Josh Hinsley's playing football manager 23. But in Rotherham United Crew while watching us. <laughs> Multitasking like it. Um, Powerman UK have a Kelwick YouTube says evening gentlemen can't wait for Saturday be interested to see how we line up mm. yeah we're going to have a good predicting that later on <laughs> um, mm. good luck with us good luck to us let's start with the transfer window slamming shut Kev as it does it always slams shut um, we were talking before we started recording that it potentially got one of the best squads we've had in a, in a long time almost in a rush uh, but it's been a great transfer window hasn't it yeah, it has. I, I think as much as it were rushed at the end, there's mm. there's some there's some we done. It's all going on behind the scenes. What we don't you know. It's been this this Quin Quinia or Quinia, how you pronounce it. <clears throat> somebody told me about that. I've I I just been out walking with a friend of mine, a Barza fan. And somebody mm. messaged me on the 19th of January saying that he um that that's two weeks ago. So it's not been in discussion. So last minute thing, but. Um, you're right. It's for, I've just been saying to my Barnsley fan mate now, and I said this potentially on paper could be the best squad we've ever assembled. Um, all Matt Taylor's got to do is get them playing together and work out which which one's not going to play and who's mm. going to replace who. Um, but yeah, you know, hats off to Tony Stewart. We've all known with all his gripes. I'm not. I, I love the guy. He's brilliant. But <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. I don't know if it's I don't know if he's fine he's thinking I'm gonna have one final push and have one final throw at mm. dice. I don't know, but he's done what we've asked. That's all we ask. It's a bit of investments and a bit of back the money, and he's done that. So that's off to him and uh, let's see how let's see how the results come out. Mm. Yeah, big time. Danny, does this put pressure on Matt Taylor now? Because pre-window, he was the one that was saying it's loans and freeze. You know, we've got we've got to be a bit clever in terms of how we do things. 
and I think that was a ploy, and I think the ploys worked. Um, so now he's got in who he wants. How much pressure does this put on Matt Taylor, or is it still just early days for him? I mean, if you think about it, lads, the transfer window was just loans and frees. Hmm. True, so, okay, so, yeah. he, so he has actually done exactly what he said he'd do, but he has been very uh, clever with the players he's brought in and he's brought players in who obviously he's done his own work on <coughs> and are probably on more wages than we would have paid in the past, shall we say. And that's probably why he's got Tony Stewart's here. You know, we need these loan signings and these free players with experience and bring them in. Yeah, it has put pressure on him. I think now that this is um, at least half of a squad that he's assembled himself, um, pressure's on for those to uh, those players to perform for him and get results out of those players. But on paper, it is a very, very strong January window. There's heaps of experience in there. A bit gutting to lose Morrison, but Taylor's come out and said himself that Wright is um, a replacement for that. Uh, and we actually got in... Barlas's replacement before Barlas uh, technically left. Yeah. So that's also very yeah. good. But there is a lot of pressure on Taylor now to grind out the results. Um, and I think Tony just maybe told him about that pressure as well. But all the faith now. All the faith in the world. <laughs> yeah. And I think the Conor Coventry one, Mick, it actually Conor Coventry was in the building as a replacement before Barlas left. That's not very Rotherham United like, to be honest with you. That is it. Normally, do is we'll sell somebody for cash and then worry about a replacement later. It's quite impressive to see the forward thinking of of them saying, "Right, we know he's on his way. Who else is there?" And he got it over the line before the bar. So I, I'm, I, it makes me pleased that that it happened in that way. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's another indication that we're becoming a professional, professional football club. You know what I mean? Uh, well, it is, isn't it? You know, because in the past we've not been run that way. Um, I, I know I'm going back quite some time now because that's probably not been the case, um, certainly off the field in the past, well, since Tony Stewart took over, off the field it's been run like a professional business, if you like, but now we're starting to, to look ahead rather than look over our shoulder um, on the pitch and in the transfer market and, and, and in the contract area, if that makes sense. So, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's forward planning and, and, and we like it. And and like Kev said, Tony Stewart's lived up to his word. He has lived mm-hmm. up to his word, despite what all of us said. I think I said in Janu- uh, beginning of January that if if he doesn't support the manager now, then his position is, is untenable because he's not stood, there, not stood by his word. Well, I can eat them words now, can't I? Because he's, he's done exactly what he said he was going to do. So full credit to him. But the euphoria of the transfer window and all the signings is now over, isn't it? And now it comes down to the serious business, to the proper business. Um, mm. and, and can Matt Taylor get a tune out of these players? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kev, who excites you most? Obviously, we made eight signings, but obviously one Sean Morrison was injured for, for the season, so essentially seven signings. Um, out of those, is there which particular one are you sort of standing out singing? That's, that's, that's the one, really, that sticks out. Did you hear me? Wait, talk to me, man. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> she was amazing, uh, doesn't that, Kev? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's because it's Barnsley. I'm uh, losing signal. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's because we're Barnsley. It's a bit windy. Um, so, did you say which one? Yeah, which, which, the low, which of the signs this window sort of stands out to you as being the best one? It's a tough one because obviously Fosu probably would have would have been the one, but it seems like we've not signed him in window because he's already played. Yeah. Um, I think Hugel. I think Hugel's the one who I think could be the, the defining mm. season changer. Because that, that for me, that's what we've been. Obviously, we lost by last week with placement Coventry, and we've we've been saying on the show for weeks we've been missing. We need a goal scorer. Someone mm. can put someone gets fifteen goals a season. Nobody we've got at the minute can, and he could be the guy who can. So for me, it's definitely Hugel could be the one who. Uh, Changes everything. Um, so that that could be the one. I, I mean, obviously, Quinny. Uh, mm. I don't. I don't really know too much about him apart from the fan mate who's been telling me we're brilliant for Barnsley. So, but <clears throat> yeah. Um, so Hugo, hundred mm. percent. Yeah, Danny, same. Um, 
I think Hugo will have more of an impact in the long run because we managed to get him on, what is it, a three-and-a-half-year deal, I think he's yeah. signed. Um, so he'll come into his own in the future and hopefully the rest of this season too. Um, you know, I would have said Morrison, if I'm being honest, from seeing him in those two games and how much he had an impact on the back line, but unfortunately we won't see him again this season. Um, but we might offer him something. I don't know. I've got visions of us offering him something in the summer because he's had that impact already. And even during his um, a bit of his rehabilitation with us, he'll still be there at training, you know, during the lads up, making that bit of competition and stuff. So he'll still have an impact, even though he's not playing. Yeah, uh, I could see something happening. I think if we were able to tie down Morrison for a little bit longer, um, even if that's a new deal in the summer or whatever, then he will be a very impactful player. Um, but as it stands right now, I'm going to agree, Hugo, because at least we've, we can actually see a bit more of him this season. Mm, true. Um, Power Yuki says Coventry for him. Liam McGuire says Fossil for him. The most exciting of the signs um, have been. But from what you've seen, he's a, he'll be a handful on the left-hand side, a very technical player as well. Uh, Joshua, this is Yelda, best in his opinion. Mm. Mick? Um, I'm most excited to see Quinner. Mm -hmm. I really am. Uh, I just I just feel that he, he, he looks, to the bits I've seen of him, like a really, really exciting player. Right. Um, you know, uh, possibly a little bit like Chio in his willingness to run at players, but also he's got he's clearly got other stuff in his locker as well. Um, so I'm really excited to see him. Um, mm. I, I, my gut feeling, and that's all it is, I've got no to base it on, my gut feeling is that he could be a bit of a game changer, that lad. Mm. Really good. So, um, we'll see. We'll see. You, you know, you, you've got to be excited about them all uh, mm. for, the, for, for different reasons uh, because they've all got quality. Uh, and that's that's absolutely key. There's, there's, they've all got quality. Um, which, which to, to, to coin the phrase that you used earlier on, that is so unrothered United. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was a Quinny. I think he's. I, yeah. I think we mentioned the other day. He's got that X factor, hasn't he? Mm. You know, he's just he's just got that something a little bit different. The goal, he's a good couple of goals he scored for Barnes. They were just ridiculous goals. Yeah. You watched him, and, and he's just got something else, much more mobile, maybe midfielder with the ball than maybe we certainly much more different than Barlas. So, um, do you think we've been left in it a shot anyway, Kev? Or do you think we've just about plugged all the gaps that needed to be done? I think maybe maybe another central midfielder potentially. I'm looking. I'm looking at this potential lineup for Satin. <clears throat> um, I think the midfield kind of picks itself. We'll go ahead, obviously, but I think the midfield kind of picks itself. So for me, that's fiddly. We could probably do the win of a strike as well. But if we if we were to pick one position, it would be attacking central midfielder. I think yeah, someone who can. Coventry, I'm sure he, you know. I've heard a lot. Of, I've got a couple of West Ham fans, and they said a lot of good things about him. Um, but yeah, I think we needed a bit more extra in midfield. But you know, stay injury free, and who knows? I think we could be all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Harvey Kelly says we need we he needs another right winger in his opinion. Um, yeah, I think we play we're playing one up top. Danny, I thought we, were, we might be a striker shot, but we could play four three three one central striker. Yeah. Hugel, Kelly, Eves. And Chio when needed would probably actually do us, won't it? Yeah, <clears throat> I think so. I think um, with the whole right winger thing, I think that will be more cover for Chio because whenever Chio's fit and you've got a centre forward fit, Chio will be on the right of that three with potentially Fozu or Ferguson on the left. Um, so yeah, I could understand another wing attacking option on that side coming in, but when you've got Wes and Kioso also on the, that right flank yeah we'd have to drop a little bit further further back for them to come into it but we have still got options on that side um yeah i, I think if if we stick with 433 which by the looks of things we probably will be at least starting wise mm -hmm. um we should be okay with our striker options so just like i say we've got uh hugo eves kelly wash and chio if yeah. needs be um, so yeah, we should, we should be all right. <laughs> sure. Josh Rinsley says MK Don's fans said he is easy to miss when he leaves Connor Coventry. I mean, I would believe him if I didn't look at their league position now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> but, 
Um, mm. Troops Travels Romosh Explorer in the comments says, it's a bonus still having Chio. Might, it uh, might be a godsend. I could be one of the best bits of business in window, mate, keeping Chio. Yeah, mm. yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, 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 I quite fancy him staying. Uh, you know, but long term. But longer term, yeah. I agree. Um, I just, he, he strikes me as, as, as somebody who, who, when he's happy somewhere, he's happy to stay. Um, and and we will have offered him a new deal quite clearly because we offered one to, to Barlasa, we offered one to Victor. Victor took it, Dan didn't. No problem with either of those. Um, we don't know what Gio has said. And I just wonder whether he may have, he may have, uh, he may have said, yeah, I hope he has. Um, because he's not going to do his career any harm whatsoever if he signs a new contract with us, because he can still go in the summer. True. Uh, mm. you know, so that's not going to make any any. It's not going to prevent any moves, uh, but it, it, it could potentially benefit us massively. So he's happy. It, it, you can tell just by looking at the guy that he's happy with his football. He's happy with his lot. So we we know now he's going to be here till the summer. Happy days. Um, <clears throat> things probably longer. Mm. I mean, if he signs a contract, depending on the type of contract and the clauses he has in it, it could make it easier for him to move in the summer. Absolutely. If he signs, yeah. if he signs a three-year contract with a clause, if we get relegated, he can go for not much. Then, that, again, that makes the move easier for him, potentially. Um, you have to think as well, as Gio looked at it and gone, where else will I be able to play as a striker or an advanced, an advanced winger in a three, if you like? <clears throat> he might not get that option at other clubs, but he might look at us and go, actually, this new manager's come in, he's playing yeah. that system where I can still be an attacking threat and not have to be pushed deeper into a more four decisive winger or uh, even as just a right midfielder. So he might look at it and go, actually, my gut's telling me to stay here. And mm -hmm. Chio has said in the past, he goes with his gut instinct. Mm. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's refreshing as well that a player's mm -hmm. actually so it, you know he could have cashed in now and gone probably doubled, treble his wages if he wanted, but any he, he knows in in the summer he'll get there anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I agree with Mick. I've got I've got a sneaky feeling he's he's waiting. And if we stay up and maybe sign Fossil permanently and mm -hmm. someone else, who knows? He he could he could stay because I, I do know he loves the club and you know enjoys playing. And if Matt Taylor brings extra out him, then I, I could see him staying as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you also look at the clubs that were interested in him, Millwall and Swansea, the two main ones, they're they're good championship clubs, but they're not particularly exciting. You know that the Barca move to Borough makes sense on about four different levels: the Carrick <coughs> issue, the chase in the Premier League. Swansea are going to be nowhere near playoffs because they won't invest any money, and Millwall will never get there because they're just that type of club that will never get there. Yeah. So it's not a mass. If you went to, if you went to those, I, I didn't I didn't see it as a massive step up. Which is probably another reason why he stayed. Um, mm. Yeah, I wonder if the transfer positivity is getting all to our heads, and we're all hoping to your stays. <laughs> I'll say, Matt, I think you've upset the entirety of Millwall's fan base with the comment. They're not hey, the look, sort of club to get there. They'll be after you. We talk. Well, right, yeah. Carry on. It, as a club, we should be aiming for what Millwall are doing because mm. they're just a type. You know, not a massive club, but the, but the championship. But if you know, if we lose our best player to Millwall, it's I won't be too happy. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, let's move on to Saturday a little bit. Um, we'll start with the one that doesn't matter, but it does matter a bit, Kev. Um, Liam McGarry says, Rathbone for captain. He would say him or Johansson. Barlas was the playing captain. Yeah. Matt Taylor says he's now gone. Um, yeah. Who is there? Is there any obvious standouts for you? I think he's probably Neil Ned or maybe one of the defenders. Um, Pelts mm. or mm. Um, even Bailey Wright, if Bailey Wright's going to start, because I think he is a leader. Um, but it's, it's a tough one because we don't really know how Matt Taylor sees it. We don't know what he, he wants from a captain. Obviously, we knew we knew what Paul Warren wanted, hence why he chose general midfielders to be captains or, or Richard Wood, I suppose, as a centre-back. Hmm. Matt Taylor may like a goalkeeper shouting at it. So, who knows? Me, personally, I, I'd give it Rathbone. Um, purely because I do think he's a leader on the pitch. And it, I think it sounds weird, but almost... Ties him in a bit more with his legacy. It makes him mm. extra, a Rotherham captain as well. So when he gets off a new deal, he's the captain. Um, but yeah, Rathbone for me. Yeah. I mean, going on a little bit like legacy, Mick, like Kev says there, we, we mentioned Rathbone's got the Frecklington's about him. Mm. Then becomes club captain as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it yeah. adds that sort of another layer. He's yeah. starting the goals a bit more to his game, which again, for, ex, for, ex, for ex, did as well. 
Uh, again, are we just is that maybe getting ahead of myself a little bit, or can you can could, could, can you see them them comparisons growing? I think you're getting ahead of yourself comparing to Frex, frankly. Yeah, really that's, I know. that's just my opinion because, uh, um, yeah, I can see that. I can see it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he has he has he has the potential to be a leader. I'm not sure whether he's still at the moment just a bit too much of a giddy kid. You know what I mean? Um, whether he's whether he's mature enough on the pitch to, to to take that on, I'm not entirely sure. But like I said, I, th- I think I said it the other night on podcast. You know, the, the captain's armband in football is is almost symbolic, really, and it? it's not. You know, it's not that important. You know, you call heads or tails and then shout at people a bit over and above what you would normally do. <laughs> you know, you want you want a lot more leaders on the pitch anyway, which is what what we're getting with the likes of Pelts and. Uh, and Bailey Wright and, and and other experienced players. So um, for me, whoever gets an armband should be somebody that's um, signed for the club and also has been here a, a little bit longer than January transfer window. That's my view. Um, so maybe Ollie is the obvious choice or Victor. I know some people don't like having goalkeepers as captain. I don't see as that mm. makes a difference for me personally. Uh, I think if it were me, it would probably go to Victor. That'd be mine. Yeah. Yeah. Currently, I say Woody is RUC captain. Yeah, if Woody plays, Woody's yeah. captain. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What, yeah. What, uh, Matt Tillis said in his interview, he hasn't told the person who was captain on Saturday, which means Woody's not playing. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. We um, would, which is like to be on bench still, even so. Oh, but yeah. he, you know, and he'll be in and around that team. Mm. Mm. Yeah, uh, John S has agreed. Make a prep perm player, Danny. Any any preferences or just whether Matt Tillis sort of sees really? Uh, I I think I think we've hit nail that Ollie does have the, um, the the future aspirations to be a captain because you can see it. You know, he get he gets in the rest phase. He gets really up in there. Really gets the team going and and the fans as well. To be fair. Um, I don't know how old he is. I, I know he's not that much older than me. He's only about 20... 26? Yeah, 25, 26. So, uh, for him to step up as a lad who's not come through Rotherham itself, it would be a big step up for him. Um, then again, you could say that about Barlasser. You know, he, he, he were about 25, 26, mm-hmm. and he stepped up to be captain and did well. Um, it is down to Matt Taylor and what his preference is. If he prefers goalkeepers, like we've said, then I think Vic's a more than capable leader as well. Um, but out of all of them that will probably play probably play Saturday, I would say Peltz is going to have it. I think Peltz is a good shout, to be fair. Yeah. It, makes, it does make sense. Um, makes a lot of sense. Uh, somebody in the comments put Chio. That's an interesting shout. That's certainly mm. not true. I, I wouldn't see it, but you never know modern football and all that. Don't know. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, Joshua Hinkley says he'd like Kelly to happen, but it would, <laughs> but it would never happen. <laughs> just, just picture this, lads. Imagine Kelly, uh, Kelly starts, gets the armband, and scores a winning goal against Sheffield United. <laughs> that is absolute dreamland, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's him getting a statue next week, guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I do know the transfer de- deadline giddiness has got to his heads. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I mean, to me, it might be the um, the freeway cola, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll do a quick, very quick, do ref watch. Um, Graham Scott is the referee for Saturday. He is basically a Premier League referee. Um, the last time he refed us was against Cardiff on the final day two years ago. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> um, we the last time we won with him in charge was in 2012. Uh, we beat Aldershot 3-0 at Aldershot. So not great signs, but he hasn't left his load. Mm. And like I say, he's a Premier League. He is yeah. or ha- can be a Premier League referee. Uh, so I can't have any complaints at this stage, but give it till quarter to one. I'm sure if I have something to complain about. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Right, let's go. Let's try and predict a lineup, Kev. I mean, this is going to be quite difficult for us, but we're, we're going to assume it's 4-3-3. Um, well, we'll start with the back four. Start with what can you see? Who's, who's your starting for? Can, can you go to Danny first? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Can you go to Danny? Tell me, Danny's. I really want to hear Danny's. 
<laughs> right. Oh, Go dear. on, Danny Jones. It's a good It's a good job of written man down, isn't it? Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so I've gone, obviously, Victor in goal. And then I've gone Pelts, Wright, Humphreys, Yelder. Yeah, that makes sense. I haven't put, put squad list up since we've made all these signings. Um, any arguments for that, Kev? Um, I'm not sure about right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think if Hall's fit, he'll play. Mm. Mm. That, but that, yeah, that could yeah, be that. Be. That'd be my only change. Um, but yeah. So, so far, so good, Danny. Carry on. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> uh, Nick, any what? any any sort of ideas to put Bramall in? If I were going to play Colin Bramall at the moment, I wouldn't put him in defence. Mm. Uh, I'm playing further up the pitch. If I think I suspect with Colin Bramall, he's going to be one of these players. If if you can release him, like you release Shane Ferguson from his defensive duties, he could be bloody lethal, yeah. absolutely lethal, that lad. So um, Hilda, for me, in the two games that he's played so far in that position, has been has been okay. He's, he's still got a lot to learn. There's no doubt about it, but obviously you can see his quality. You know, you can see he's an absolute quality player. So, yeah, um, he will get caught out, but but he will be my starter in that left back position, definitely. Fair enough. Uh, people in the comments, Pelts, uh, Harvey Kelly says Pelts, Hall, Humphreys, Hilda, um, Pramwood UK, uh, says Hilda, Hall, Humphreys, Pelts. Uh, no shouts for Wes, no shouts for Wes to get, to get back into the team at this stage. I like him. I feel sorry for Wes. I really mm. do. I, I mm. think, yeah, he's one of the uh, underrated ones. I, I, I like him, but I think it's, I can't believe we're having a conversation. We're actually, we've got options. That's right. No. Mm. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go on, Danny, might as well continue. Midfield three, I assume. Yeah, uh, quick question before I carry on. How many loans are you allowed in a starting 11? Five. Five. One, two, three, four. <laughs> right, I'm sticking. Sound. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've gone for Coventry, Quinner, and Rathbone in midfield. Interesting. There was rumours that Quinner's injured or had picked mm. up a knock, so might not be fully match fit. Yeah. If that's the case, then Lindsay comes in for me. I'll say I'd have a Dauphin. My, my have a Dauphin. Coventry, Rathbone, yeah. a Dauphin. Ah. Mm. Although Quinner did, but did play himself into contention with his interview today. Yeah. Um, when he clearly didn't fancy the South Yorkshire weather either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that. I thought it, it, that picture at Roundwood, he looked absolutely frozen, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's just come from the South of Spain. I know. <laughs> um, oh so, remind me again, Danny. Coventry. Um, Coventry, Quinner and Rathburn. Okay. Mick? <laughs> He's got a problem as Matt Taylor here. Yeah. Because... Despite the fact he's, he's signed Coventry and he's signed G Kinner and he's signed, I don't know who else to play that midfield because I can't remember now. Uh, <laughs> not many. How, the question I would ask is how can you drop Shane Ferguson after the way he's performed? How can you drop mm. Akeem Ruffin after the way he's performed? Yeah. And you can't mm. drop you can't drop Oli Rathbone. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he will and he'll have to at some stage. Take at least one of those players out, uh, possibly two. But you know what? It's a it's a tough tough decision that. Yeah. Ferg has been absolutely on fire. There he has. Absolutely on fire. Yeah. Adolphin has been like uh, a number of people have said it on social media. has been like a new signing. Yeah. However, if what we're told is true, the players, some of the players that have been brought in, Connor Coventry. And, and, and Kinner as well, that they have the quality to be a better player and to be more more dangerous for us. So he's, he's got his work cut out here and I wouldn't like to, I would not like to second guess what he's going to do at all. Yeah. It's kind of what we're here to do, to be honest with you. Right? Although, <laughs> although I think, I think Fergie, I think Ferguson the last time he played, he was in the front three, weirdly enough, mm. I think he was. Yeah, he was, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Although I don't think he'll be in this front three, so again he's missing out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. yeah, I think it's same now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there's more some comments to the midfielders. Paramount says he would do, they would do Coventry, Rathbone, <coughs> a Dauphin, um, as well. Harvey Kelwick says a Dauphin, Coventry, Rathbone. Uh, if Kinner's fit, I would start him because I think he gives you something different. But mm. 
again, I'm dropping a Dauphin. I don't want to drop a Dauphin because I think mm. he's been sensational in the last two games. Um, very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. So we've, we've not really predicted anything there, to be honest with you. What we've said is we don't know in that midfield three. Yeah. Um, I'm, not sure Dauphin's, I'm not sure Dauphin's a sub. I think, obviously, I will vocal a... I was vocal a couple of months back about a dolphin, mm. and we were bringing him on for the last 10, 15, 20 minutes of a game, and he was having mm. no impact at all. He's not an impact sub. Right. So, and personally, if it were a choice of Quinner or a dolphin, I'd start a dolphin, and you know, if he's having a poorish game, fetch Quinner on for the second half. But I just think a dolphin, it, it's clearly a confidence player. He, like, he likes to be starting, mm. he likes a bit of confidence, he plays better when he starts. So, I'd, I'd start yeah, him. yeah. Yeah, are you wondering if if Kinner's somebody who, because he's a bit more a bit more mobility about him, whether he can have an he can have that impact from the bench? Because he's got a bit more pace about him, though he can be a bit more impact. I sir, I agree. Um, Tobias says, Mick, you are a clock sum and bock. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what just that means. Swedish. Oh, you've just been on Google Translate. I've seen you. What, 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 does, what does that mean? <laughs> it's, I, th I think he's put it wrong because it says you're wise as a book. <laughs> 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 not, not the Mickey I know. Honest, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that's a, I'm not sure that's a compliment. Coming from, <laughs> to be I think that's possibly more a Mickey take. <laughs> hey, man, I, I think you're right. Might be, I think you might be agreeing with your Fergie comment. To be honest with you, I know, yeah. I know to my big, big Fergie fan. Yeah, um, is, yeah. yeah. Front three: Danny, Josh Hinkliff says Fergie, Hugel, Chio. Then you're losing out on Fosu. Yeah. <laughs> but again, Fergie's been sensational. You can't not yeah. play Chio. And can you really not play Hugo? I mean, if anyone gets 11 out of 11 on their fan up <laughs> thing, you actually deserve that pint because, yeah. good grief, this is, this is this is more of a head stretcher than last season when we had ridiculous yeah. options in midfield. Um, but I've gone for Ogbeni, Hugo, and Fosu. Mm. Same. But then I'm yeah. trying to work out my bench and who should drop <laughs> to bring into the squad. You're going to take Connor Washington out. I know. But he didn't play thought, against, against Watford, did he? I thought about taking Eves out of the match day squad altogether, to be fair, and then bringing Wash onto the bench because then it's that different option up front. Whereas with Eves, yeah, it's a like for like. Is fit, is it? I don't think Eves will be fit. Yeah. Right. So, so do you think out of the two, Kelly will be more fit? Yeah, I suspect Kelly will be at least on the bench ready. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. It would be a football... Who was it who was playing uh, football manager whilst watching us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, do you have these head scratches as well? Because it's been my head hurt thinking about this. <laughs> yeah. Um, John S says, yes, Fergie, Hughie. Hughie, I like. A cheer. Um John C says Fergie to play as a ten. There isn't really a ten. The problem with four three three, there isn't a ten. No. I mean, unless you play, unless you play Fergie as one of your central three, but I don't. He's played a bit more yeah. like him in that in that role. He's better out wide. I yeah. think. Um, Sean Green, Fosu, Hugel, and Chio. But like Danny says, I, that, that's what I would go with. But I feel really bad, Mick. Yeah. If, I, if I were me, I would feel so bad not playing Fergie. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, and Connor Washington as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, How good is it though? How good is it that we're having mm. this? We're, we're having this good. We have got so many options. Yeah, <laughs> I've mean, heard rumours that Matt Taylor watches the podcast. Matt, if you're watching, can you just appear in the comments and tell us what the lineup is? We already announced a signing before the club the other day. So can we have the lineup in the comments, please? <laughs> is there a YouTube user? It's cool now, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, to be fair, I, I would, I would argue that. Not that many of the newer signings are likely to start. Mm. It might only be the odd one or two because, you know, we've we've got to get them into into our way of playing. We've got to, they need some time training with the team. Uh, so whoever it is is going to have to slot in seamlessly. Yeah, bearing in mind we're playing second in the league. You know what I mean? So it's not it's not as though we've, we we can we can sort of ease them in at all. With the, the straight into uh, straight into fire. So. Mm. You know, it, it, maybe the team might not be that that much changed from last time out. Yeah, possibly just the one or two. I think the defense is um, that that that's where his edit is going to be because, yeah. like Mick said, we're, we're playing the we're playing um, second in table. They've just turned down a twenty five. I know that and, and Day Bramall Lane weren't very good, 
Well, he's a 20, they just turned 25 million pound now for him. They, they managed to keep Sander Berg. This is a good team, so it's no good. It's no good bringing. I mean, I don't know if Bailey Wright's been playing for Sunderland or not, but you, you can't have somebody who has not played for a month coming mm. straight into a team and being ripped apart by and die or Sander Berg. He's, yeah. he's got to he's got to be careful. Um, so mm. that that could be as that could be the one defense that could be where we don't see the change. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, he did play against Middlesbrough, Bailey Wright. I don't know how long the game he played, um, but he did, he did certainly play. So that's, it, there will be some of that fitness in there, hopefully. Yeah, um, yeah let's talk about Sheffield for, for a little bit. Um, they come off the back of a FA Cup draw, um, but they didn't play the first team, Kev, to be fair. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, they've won all the games except one since we beat them in, uh, mm. in, when, in October, whenever it was. This is going to be... One of the toughest games of the season, and they're, 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 they're Premier League bound, realistically. Aren't yeah. They? yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all, I mean, I, I won't go as far as saying they're all bad promoters, but it'll, it's going to take a mm. major fallout from for it not to go up. And you know, you, know, look, you, look, you look through the squad, um, quality throughout at defense, keeper, every, everywhere, everywhere's quality. It's going to be a very tough game, but it's a Yorkshire derby, it's going to be fiery, it's half 12, it's on, I think it's on red buttons, on sky. Mm. Anything could happen. Literally anything could happen. Um, I watched the Wrexham game, and I, obviously I know it weren't the first team, but they had a, a fair few in it. They looked very, very vulnerable at the back mm. from set pieces, which is yeah. obviously generally one of our strong points. So anything could happen. Could be an early red card, could be an early goal. Um, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably would. Um Troop travels the Romash Explorer says they look terrible at Rex in the FA Cup straight out of the mud, put them under a bit of pressure. Mm. Yeah, but I think that was one of those FA Cup days, Danny. I said what about Rexham, but this was a team with a team at home with the crowd right on them, well up for game. Rexham are one of those teams that just cause chaos wherever they yeah. go. I I'm personally not taking too much from other than enjoyment of the game itself, because I did enjoy it. I'm not taking too much away from Sheffield United from that game. No, and uh, they still managed just to scrape a draw out of it. I think that was more the magic of the FA Cup at play, wasn't it? Um, but you have, to, you have to remember, it was one of the strongest-looking Sheffield United teams for a long time. The last time they were at New York, and we managed to get 2-2 out of it. Right. Granted, we finessed it a little bit. We propped as late equaliser. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Sheffield United's gone up to Premier League, come back down. They've still got a few players from that. I mean, I mean, we all thought we'd get absolutely cooked when we went to Bramall Lane. Mm. And funnily enough, the last game Sheffield United lost was against <laughs> Rotherham, yeah. which is very strange football symmetry. Um, but I think looking at how we went into the Blackburn game, you know, we went, we went in unpredictable. You know, new signers went straight in and, you know, they hadn't really done the homework. This could mm. be another one of those situations. You know, it's, it's very hard to do your research on players when they've not played for your club, but the manager's seen them in training. So yeah. it, it could play into our favour that, but at the same time, you know, they've got McCatty back from a uh, little injury at Wrexham. Um, Jebson's still injured. They got, they got, they got, they got, not, they got sent off, didn't they? But... Yeah, so no, Jebson got sent off, sorry, so he's suspended. Yeah. <sighs> um, but other than that, they still do have a very strong team. Mm. Very, very strong team. But if we try and play, not quite the same as we did last time but still like pull the defenders out and then create mm. space for ourselves and like I say, set pieces as well yeah. it could prove fruitful for us but again I'm with Kev I'm happy we draw if I'm being honest yeah um, yeah they've gone into sort of that promotion team mode Mick I was speaking to a Hull fan where they, they scored early against Hull went 1-0 up and then just shut the game down You know, there, there were no going on for 3 or 4-0 they just shut the game down and Hull couldn't deal with it and, and couldn't break them down. That's what teams will go and win promotion for. And that's crucial not to concede early. It's so, so important. Do not concede in the first 10 minutes or so. Otherwise, it's going to be a massively long afternoon. Potentially, yeah. Potentially. But uh, they strike me from what I've seen of them. And I've not seen a great deal, but I have spoke to a few Sheffield United supporters as well. They strike me as a team that are not massively happy with, with teams that get in their face and and mm. put them under pressure and, mm. and press like we pressed when we went to their place and it, and it showed there. Um, so mm. we just need a, we need a strong start. If we mm. continue to play the way we played the last two games, we've got nobody to fear in this division, nobody to fear. Um, yeah, we'll get beat. However, you know, we're also, we're also in a position to beat any of them. 
Um, so sure. just we just need to be on the front foot. Um, and I think if we're getting the faces, it's anybody's game. You know, yeah, the second in the league, yeah, they're one of the one of the best teams in the league, no question. But we said it before, and I say it again. You know, the gap in quality is not huge. Mm. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. It's just it's, it's going to be a difficult one. But you've also got to factor in the the, the derby aspect to it as well, haven't you? Um, yeah. And like you said, when we played them at their place, a couple of players had an off day. And Jay, I think, was probably thinking more about the World Cup than he were about playing Rotherham on a cold Tuesday night in Sheffield, weren't he? You know? Um, so, yeah, get in the faces and I think we'll be all right. Fair enough. We'll go through the predictions in a bit because um, they'll be fun. Right. We are going to bring back something we used to do. We used to do previously. We used to bring fans in to talk about, just give us a random question or we'll 10 minutes to chat about that and then we'll finish off with some predictions. Uh, tonight we have Richard with us, uh, who is in the comments on a regular basis, Richard, on the YouTube channel. How are you doing, mate? I'm all right. Thank you, lads. Thanks for inviting me. Good to be on. No worries. Pleasure to have you with us. So give us your question then. Well, I told you to give us a question. I mean, like a related question, and then we'll have a chat about it. What is, uh, what is your question to us? So which three players would you most like to go on a night out with or just go for a beer with and why? Cool. I was going to start with Mick. Mick, I'm going to Scooby Doo. Uh, have you, Mick? Why, why are you starting with me? You know, right? Before we before we came on air, I didn't want to answer to any of those. That's what you did, to, isn't it? Mick, you would check the messages as we went live. <laughs> I've been busy. Yeah. Today, but I've been busy. Uh, you know your town, yeah. Definitely mm -hmm. Tony Towner because he was probably one of the best players I've I've seen play for this football club. And I also think he was a little bit daft and a bit cheeky and all. And I think he'd be a right laugh to have a night out with. So Tony Towner, um, Frex, because I just love him. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I, you come back to me for third. <laughs> oh, yeah, come back to me for third. Okay. I'm definitely going with those two. Okay, cool. Uh, Kev, what have you got? What have you thought of? I was going to go with Frex as well, but for a different reason. You're in, you're in um, lounge last year and he smelt so nice. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. Never smell like him, but we'll leave that one. Is it, can, I, can I have a manager? Can I chuck a manager in? Sure, yeah, go for it, yeah. So a manager had um, like about Kenny Jacket. Kenny Jacket. <laughs> Purely because... That guy, that guy knows how to waste money. So if you're gonna have a night out, somebody. <laughs> um, like player, it. player, that like guy Branston, mm. purely just for protection, <laughs> no. no other reason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Alan Lee, obviously, uh, wow. is a legend. We had him at the Legends Night, and some of the stories they were telling about Alan Lee seems like a bit of a ladies' man. So. If you're gonna go out with somebody, you go out with a ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Um, Josh Inslee says Barlas a Smith Woody. Smith, mm. interesting shout. I like it. Uh, I've gone Branston for the same reasons as Kev, really. Um, Warnock would be great. He'd charm some drinks. Yes. Off some We'd be drinks all night with Warnock yeah. there. Yeah. And I've gone from the current squad. I've gone Yelder because he looks like a really, really good laugh. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. throwing that one out, Danny. What do you reckon? Um, I've said Frecklington as well, uh, purely because of the stories that you could get out of him after a couple of years, I imagine. Um, I've from the current squad, I've gone Victor because I think Victor would be an absolutely amazing laugh on a night out because it because being Scandinavian is just built different anyway, so <laughs> he might be able to keep pace with him, but we'll see. Um, and then I'm going to say Barlasser because at Gillingham, he said to me, are you coming out in Wickersley when you get back? And I and I said, I'll, we'll see. And it's one of my biggest regrets not going out in Wickersley <laughs> that night. So I want to go out with him at some point. You're you're obsessed with that story. I know you talk about it a lot, but you love it, don't you? <laughs> right. You go on the pitch at somebody else's ground when you've just won promotion and one of the players says to you, are you coming out in Wickersley later? <laughs> I was an idiot to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I've been up since um, three o'clock. I was tired, but anyway. Oh, Richard's left us. I will try and bring him yeah. back. Uh, Mick, 
But you haven't given you third. You've got Tony Town and Frex. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna come <laughs> another quid because I'm gonna say Paul Warren. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Uh, mm. I, I could talk. We could talk American football all night. Uh, that'd be good fun. Be a good laugh. Uh, and then we can then we can just get all melancholy and moany about nice people and everything. I'm I'm right up for that kind of drunken chat. So that'd be great. Yeah, Paul, Paul Warren. That's Would you have a drunken cry with him, Mick? Though. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Need to go in a smoking area in one of clubs in Sheffield. Then there's always drunken crying there. Yeah. How many times has he just said that W word anyway? Three Twice. times. Twice. Three times. Ooh. I thought somebody else, Sarah, Sarah Ogden, just mentioned him, but Sean Gota. Um, oh yeah. Couple Great of stipulations show. though. To have to have to be in Bermuda. That that's one of the rules. Got to be in Bermuda. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Imagine sitting. On, imagine sitting on beach, drinking rum and smoking something strong, yes. talking football with Sean Gota. It'd just be amazing. Yeah, I love it. That sounds great. I like that. <laughs> um, uh, Richard, give us your view. If you will go through comments, but have you thought who your three would be? That's your question. Apologies, my internet went not very good. Um, okay. So I put Ronnie Moore because I think he'll be funny and he will have some stories mm. to tell. And obviously, he's King Ronnie after all. I've also mm. put Guy Branston because if he's anything like he was on the pitch, he will be mental. And obviously, plus, if anything kicks off, he'll sort it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the next one was just totally uh, favorite all time player, loved him growing up, Trevor Berry. Trevor Berry, oh, yeah, Trevor. good call, mm. good yeah. call, Nicky Trevor. Just that favorite all time player, drink as well. He could drink, yeah, yeah. I wish yeah. I'd picked him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he used to have, true, true story, he used to have a half time, everyone have, he, used, he used to have a brandy at half time, did he? Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to make a note of that, Kev. <laughs> Don't want you doing that charity match, Danny. There's no no whiskey or brandy at half time. I'll decide. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a few more ones. Reg says Tom Pope, Andy Monkhouse, and Richard Wood. That is a Whoa. that is a crazy three, but I, I respect it. I don't yeah. get it. <laughs> Tom Tom Pope's a bit. Yeah. So yeah, I can. I can That's see true. That. Yeah, a bit cut. Yeah, yeah, um, Splash uh, Donna from Splash Ed Stroom School says current squad. She would say Georgie, Ollie. Oh, and Georgie's Pope. a shout. Yeah. George, Georgie, because he's a decent intellectual chat. Ollie, because mm. if there was any trouble, we'd sort it. And Pelts, because he's older, so would he feel like I'm a granny? <laughs> 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 yeah. I can just put Ollie. If there's any trouble, Ollie had sort it. He'd try and sort it. We'd be looking up at everybody, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, sort of. It'd be um, like a terrier, though, Ollie. Wouldn't he? Just run about round him, and they won't be able to catch him. Yeah. Mm. John C says, "Go to his tea talk. That's fine. We we can drink. The, we can drink while we just chat to him. Yeah, yeah. for me. Mm. Yeah. Uh, right. That was fun. That. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, Rich, tell us how you think Saturday's going to go. We know it's going to be tough against Sheffield United. What are your thoughts ahead of the? Uh, well, a very very tough game. I don't think we've got anything to fear, to be honest. I think they're we're the underdogs, definitely. Um, mm. You know, we just need to to go at them, and I think set pieces need to exploit that. They looked a bit, you know, sort of suspect against Wrexham. But uh, yeah, I'll be honest. I think he's got a, he's got a an headache, Matt Taylor. I don't envy him. I tell you that. It's, but he's got a very good headache um, in terms of who he's going to play. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, yes, big time. Let's go through a couple of predictions for. Wrap up anything else. I will start because I've already given my prediction to a, a Sheffield United podcast. I put us down for a 1 0 win. Leave being positive. Mm. Uh, I was being very positive at the time. Um, Mick, what do you reckon? Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with my uh, my friend from the Watford podcast and I'm going to uh, go on the last result. So I'm going 1 1. Okay. Mm. Terrible reasoning. I know. Okay. It's yeah. <laughs> um, as much as I said I would take a draw, and I would, prediction-wise, I, I fear, I don't know why, I've got this instinct that something's going to happen in the game to our advantage, so I'm going to go 2-0 Rotherham. That is mm. something I like. I like that a lot. Danny? Well, I've had a look at the history behind this, lads. <laughs> um, the last time we won at Bramall Lane was the 80-81 season. Mm -hmm. Right. That was also the last time we did the double over Sheffield United. Um so and we won both games two one. Right. So I think we're gonna win one nil. 
I like the style. I like the football in symmetry. I like everything about that, don't you? Uh, Richard, what do you think? Yeah, I've, I've said 1 0 too as well. I think it'd be, be quite tight. Um, but yeah, I think 1 0. Yeah, I like it. We'll go through a lot of people. 2 1 says Brian. Um, Donna says Brothers of Blade. So he's gone 1 0 to us. So I have at least another few years of ribbing if they go up and we stay. If they go up, we stay. Um, Harvey Kellick says 1-1. One, one. Uh, this one says 3-1 to so the Millers. One will will be wild Saturday afternoon. Uh, Josh Hainsley says 1-1. One, one, Hugo and Die. John, John S. says 1-1. One, one. Sean Green says 2-1. Youtube user says 2-1. Power Med UK says 1-0. Sarah Ogden says it's the Battle of the Bragging Rights in her house. She must live with a blade. It's the Battle uh, of the Bragging is. Rights in my family as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same here, yeah. Uh, Tobias says we won away, should be an easy three points. He says 2 1. <laughs> Every uh, time he says easy three points, it's the three points. Not apart, always. It, apart I mean, it, from it, Luton. It, it came to Luton with a hat that said three easy points and we drew. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Most times when he says three easy points. <laughs> <laughs> Although um, it was more Theobion who was saying three easy points at Luton, I don't, I don't think I remember uh, Tobias saying it. There you go. See, every mm. time he says three easy points, <laughs> three easy points. Uh, Josh Inslee <laughs> says fifty. I don't know what that's a fifty million. 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 Fifty million nil to Rotherham. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that, he's still playing football manager. He's, he, what he's done, he's added himself a Sheffield United manager. And just all players on wing. <laughs> just through the middle. That's that's the trick for you. I was gonna say um, I think you need to up your difficulty if it's um <laughs> that's goal line lad. <laughs> um Michael Carnell says, Good evening, lads. I know a bit behind, but you were talking about formation. I forgot about Kyo, so right. Mick, yeah. Mick, oh, Mick God, yeah. long... again, where does he get in? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If it were me. He'd probably get the nod ahead of Peltier. Okay. But that's mm. just me. So, yeah, again, it's depth, isn't it? There's some mm. depth just about <laughs> all over the park. It's fantastic. I think he's, he's a bit quicker, isn't he? A bit quicker mm. than Pelts. He's gonna, you're going to need some pace against Sendai. So, yeah, it is, it's actually mm. weirdly bigger than it looks. It is, it's, it's, not, it's not a short kid. Yeah. Mm. He's, he's not, he's, his physicality is, is great compared to Peltier. Mm. I think he's got that physicality over him. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, Richard, what have you thought about the starting line? We mentioned, mentioned a minute ago, you know, Matt Tiller's got a hell of a headache on. What have you thought for your lineup for Saturday? I've actually put Kyoso in, to be honest. Um, okay. Kyoso, um, I think we've got to go strong. Um, I have initially put right in, but then it's like people are saying, uh, you know, will, will he fit in? Uh, Helder, um, probably Pelts centre off with Humphreys. Depends if Quinn is fit or not. Um, Coventry mm. and Ollie. And then I think it's obviously Chio, Fosso and Hugill. But definitely yeah. Quinn. I think he's the one I'm looking forward to seeing most, more than anything. Mm. Um, mm. Seen a few videos on YouTube and that, and it looks it looks very, very exciting. Mm. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, Danny, no for you. Same for you. We would just, I don't think we would say we wish we would start him. Um, <clears throat> now that he has come back into my memory, I am tempted to put him in for Pelts, you know. Yeah. I am very tempted. Mm. In fact, I am going to commit to that. I'm going to put <coughs> Kyoto in for Pelts and then shift my captaincy to Rathburn, I think. I don't, Danny, I don't want to let you down at all, mate, but you know it doesn't make any difference. I know. It, I know. <laughs> yeah, it does, yeah. It does my fan. If I win a free oh, pie, yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> oh, and lads, right, this is going to be dangerous. I'm going out in Sheffield for my mate's birthday after. Oh don't wear your Rotham shirt. <laughs> Whether we win or lose, don't wear your Rotham shirt. I'm going to be singing Og Benistong walking down West Street. <laughs> yeah. Matt, can you see if you can try and find somebody else to get on for podcast Sunday night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 30, I, made, I made the Wednesday podcast and that was on the same day. I'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, so can't believe we did that. Um, yeah, uh, anything else we want to talk about? I think we've covered just about everything tonight. Is there anything else we need, we have mentioned, need to mention that we've forgotten about? We've, we've got about a player a minute ago, so it's probably some we forgot about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, I think we're good, aren't we? We've covered it, haven't we? Who's cool. gonna score against Sheffield United? <laughs> the hero, mm. no local by this time, is there? 
Set piece defender oh. for me. Okay, like it. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah. set piece does make sense. I'm going to go Georgie, late Georgie goal. Yeah. Why not? The only, the, only, ones. The, only <laughs> the only way I'll accept Georgie's goal if it's in front at North Stand. Late well, on in front at North game, Stand. So you can, they'll, they'll definitely do it with North Stand, won't it? Mm. Are we? Yeah, um, is, is there any news on uh, on whether we're going to reappropriate the Greasy Treat Butty song? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so. I think well, it's to have now. We should have started a campaign earlier, and we should have, should have tried to get 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 that reappropriated and taken back to it, brought back home, just just to annoy him. Not not for any other reason, just to annoy people. <laughs> I thought I thought about why for a bit of humor, you know, they're playing New York, New York, just as we're about to kick off. Yeah. Well, to start with Grease Chip Butter, then do a bit of a scratch and then kick in New York, New York. <laughs> just, yeah. just, to, just to wind them up a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. Do it. Toddy, if you want uh, to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. We'll lock it on Ed. Thank you for being with us. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. The YouTube channel will creep up to 900 very, very shortly, I think. So thank you, everybody, for being with us. And oh, if you join in the transfer episode as well, uh, thank you. <laughs> that, were, that were a lot of hard work for an hour and a half, but we got there in the end. Um, and then we did it at the end tonight. So thank you all. Richard, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Well, I appreciate really it. Customer. Thank you. Um, Danny, a pleasure if you have you with us as well and sharing that you can fit into a medium shirt now. Yeah, I'm very impressed. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, Mick, thank you for being with us. You eventually thought of some names, so that was good in I the end. The names were a problem, mate. We'll find the reasons why. Yeah, and I, th I think, mate, I think my reasons for 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 the previous manager were pretty weak, if I'm honest. But you know, I did read it, you know. So you yeah, don't say his name again. Go oh, just some more. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Uh, I'm Kev. Thank you very much. Just to get a bit of mention again, if anyone wants, wants to bid or get them some of the tickets for the shirts, just yeah. follow you on Twitter. Yeah, last all, you know. anyone can only sign Chio Bennett FA Cup shirt, still at £225, this one's out, I think, so big deep. Yeah, big deep, everybody. The hospital is such a great cause. Yeah. Uh, we will be back on Sunday, Sunday evening, to review what will hopefully be a win, um, and then we will be back, obviously, the standard things from then onwards if you haven't already asked to subscribe on itunes spotify youtube wherever you're with us make sure you subscribe and like and five star it wherever you possibly can and yeah thank you everybody and we'll see you all next time up the millers, up the millers. Yeah. thank you see you later